Welcome to Case Back Watches. My name is Tim. In this video, I'd like to start with a wish or a dream. And I want to express the wish that Rolex goes back to its root and presents again beta watches. Tough beta watches, watches you can wear without worrying, without worrying about the tiniest scratch because this changed. And I think we all should remember that in the 60s, 70s, 80s, a Rolex, let's say sports or tool watch really was a tool. It was relatively affordable. It was not a luxury. So the people back then could um, distinguish between a tool, a hard rock solid tool and a luxury item. And they didn't mix this together. This is now completely different. As we know, the recent Rolex Explorer retails above 7K. Yeah, it's crazy, 7K. And this leads to uh, somewhat grotesque behavior I've seen on YouTube and on forums and in real life that people completely freak out over ah! tiny scratches on their, on their watch. I mean, I've seen once a video made by who was it? Mark Goldberg. And he did an entire video about a scratch on his watch. He scratched, I've scratched my Rolex was the video title. Help! That sort of, sort of content. Absolutely crazy. I mean, attention to a little tiny scratch like it was a car accident. But the problem is with those retail prices here, the tiny scratch represent in fact the value of a car accident. And so people are extremely careful with their watch. They baby their watches in a way which is just crazy. On a forum I've seen that people now use lasers to fix little dings and dings on, on <laughs> Rolex watches. So the laser applies little bits of metal in those scratches. Extremely expensive, takes its time, takes hours or even days to fix this, this bad scratch or this tiny scratch. And during this laser procedure, by the way, you hear a strange sound from <laughs> underground. Those are our grandfathers and they're laughing <laughs> about, about this kind of behavior. But nowadays, of course, there are still people who can distinguish between tool and luxury luxury watch and when somebody tries to sell them a reduced to the bones tool watch for 7k or more than 7k they say no thank you but they still want the experience they still want the look and the, the ability to wear a good looking tough robust watch without caring so much right and so this is in my eyes the reason for all those rolex homage we see now but they are not only homage watches they don't present you only the look or the vibe of a piece they really present you the yeah the main purpose the main function of a watch robust good looking beta watch and so the plan for this video is to present you three alternatives and two of them you have already seen here on the channel the third is new absolutely new on the internet this is a watch from a micro brand con called 10119 from berlin and yeah we will examine this piece then in detail in the light box after the other two recommendations here and by the way this is a very interesting watch i've seen here or I've found uh, many pros and one big con uh, but i will explain you all this in the light box but now let's start with our first two alternatives and number one here is from time factors prs 25 everest many people know this watch if you don't know it you find a lot of reviews in-depth reviews on youtube so i will keep it short now this watch really follows the early rolex explorer watches or other tool watches it's not a really an homage i would say it's there is some some heritage from the uk in it because of the smith's brand and here you really see the classy ingredients black dial all steel case metal bracelet very reduced numerals and indices so legibility overall rock solid thing anti-magnetic and the watch sits just great on the wrist if you see the dimension it's relatively thin case diameter as mentioned 36 millimeters but the proportions are very well chosen and so this is really a pleasure on the wrist that watch so this is really a watch you don't have to worry about and the price is relatively modest they go for 375 euros and the equivalent in us dollars is about 415 us dollars so a very affordable watch the downside is that the prs 25 comes in small quantities and small editions and so often they're sold out so you have to join the newsletter i think to get your notification when the shop is open to get in possession of that watch but i personally think it's really worth it and by the prs comes with a sapphire and i think this is for a lot of people this is a very good material very very popular material 
um, in comparison to the traditional Plexi. The second watch I want to recommend is from Zeno Watch Basel. The watch was here on the channel, sent in by the Caseback supporter Yu. Many thanks again for this. This was a really, really great piece. And this is the Super Precision. And as you can see, it's also an homage watch, 36 millimeters. Discontinued now, the, the, the successor is 38 millimeters. And here you find again the classic ingredients of a, of a tool watch, of a beta watch in that tradition, in that and that Rolex Explorerish line. You have here again a steel case, you have a plexi like the old Rolex watches, you have a steel bracelet, you have a relatively exotic movement as an AS movement, new old stock, cleaned and assembled at Zeno Watches Basel. Pretty interesting as you asked me, not hackable, so it's a pretty basic movement actually, but I like this, um, yeah, this aspect a bit, this, but that's the, that's the watch nerd in me, I think. Some people complain here about the case dimensions, 36 in diameter, as, I've, as I said, but the height is 14, 14 millimeters, and so this is pretty high in comparison to the other two watches I present you here. I personally, I don't have so much a problem with that. I, uh, in a way, I like it because um, 36 and 14 gives the watch this this gem look, so like a little little yeah piece of metal on the wrist. And so I personally like it. It was really enjoyable to wear, use super precision here in the studio. And I was really close to pull the trigger. Maybe I will do this before this video here goes online. <laughs> because here again, availability is not super great. You find some new Zeno Watch Basel super precision still on eBay, but not in super large quantities. And one little addition here, don't be afraid of 36 millimeters. If you have a wrist between, let's say, 17 and 18 and a half centimeters, then it's not a problem. It's absolutely not a problem. 36 millimeter can look really great because it's not necessary. It's not, it's not the purpose of the watch that it covers your entire arm. I mean, this is really not necessary. And so 36 millimeters can look very classy, very good, especially if you wear the watch in other, other circumstances, not on the Mount Everest, for example. And as mentioned, you will find many reviews of the PRS25 here on YouTube, but I think only one about the Zeno watch Super Precision, and there is the link. There you can see the piece and the light box on my wrist. By the way, you sent me another interesting watch from Time Factors, a very early piece, but I think I will show you this in another video. Okay, but now let's go in the light box. Let's examine this prototype. Yes, you have heard right. This is a prototype not available yet. yet 10, 11, 9 from Berlin. This will be a Kickstarter campaign. If the Kickstarter campaign right now is active, then I will leave a link in the description. And I found many pros here on this watch and one big con. And I will be, yeah, merciless as always. And so let's go in the light box now. Okay, here we are with our prototype 10.11.9. This model is called Researcher and you see Rolex Explorer DNA here. A little bit of influenced by, by Omega, I would say. So good mixture of two very famous and iconic brands and watches. We will have to use this during this video. I will show you that in a couple of minutes because prototypes have issues. Okay, let's go over the basic measure measurements here. Case diameter is 38 millimeters. Lugwidth is 20, the height is 11. Yeah, this is sweet, right? This really sounds sweet. The length overall is 47 millimeters. So really good medium size and I would say fit um, for 90% of all wrist measurements here. And you see here a black dial, dolphin hands and this distinctive second hand here, numerals on 12 and 6, so very uncluttered, very legible, matte black dial. And here's the brand name 10119. Uh, by the way, is a uh, zip code for Berlin. Berlin, uh, there's a neighborhood in the middle of Berlin with that zip code and this is where there's the company located. And the mastermind behind that watch here is live. And he's a photographer from Berlin and a watch, um, yeah, watch lover, watch geek, so to speak. And under the 10.11.9, you see the word king size. And this is a somewhat strange, it sounds a little bit like cigarette. But Life explained that um, back then, in the early days of those expedition watches, I mean, this is a vintage inspired watch. In those early days, king size meant, um, yeah, a little bit bigger than the usual size or let's say 34 to 35, 36 millimeters. So this means king size, not a cigarette, guys. And the other elements here I really like. I mean, automatic on a dial is, is yeah, perfectly, perfectly fine. 
and the research of the name of the watch is very subtle and so yeah absolutely no problem with that okay but now let's get discuss the case a little bit the case is uh, manufactured in Glashütte so made in Germany and you see the design follows the classic um, explorer design a bit you have high polished sides here and this facet is high polished then you have brushed lux as you can see brushed lux and a high polished bezel without any marks on it so a very clear look the crown is um, somewhat terrible and um, yeah not very beautiful and it's very hard very hard to manipulate I think there's something wrong with the seal by the way I don't think that that's the, it's the crown actually and like I've said they have to change this crown this crown is just terrible I will show you in a, in a second and like sent me a nice documentation where you can read um, the origin of every part here and so uh, let me explain here the case um, as mentioned is from Glashütte Germany the dial is from Lorach this is uh, in Germany too so made in Germany the movement is a Solita SW200 so Swiss, Swiss movement the hands are from Morteau this is in France bracelet worldwide so I think this means yeah can you can be China but yeah okay never mind not a pr problem um, montage e regulation in Germany let's discuss a bit the, the bracelet which I really like and as you can see this thing is in really good condition although the watch was tested heavily it's, um, yeah it's covered with marks and here you see the the clasp also very good very well made clasp with a security clasp it's very easy to handle it feels very precise and substantial and so I really like this this bracelet here and it comes with solid end links drilled lug holes and so yeah case bracelet crystal I've um, forgotten to mention excuse me this is a sapphire crystal anti-reflective sapphire crystal and so all those ingredients perfect okay now let's operate it and now I have to do something um, please don't do this at home please don't do this at home now we have to use heavy tools here screw down crown but it's extremely tight it's tr extremely tight unscrewed now and if you want to pull it now in position ah in position one it's absolutely impossible and I, I'm pretty sure that this is the seal and so let's do it the, the the rough way very sorry that you have to see this we are lucky that this is a prototype guys there you are and that's it that's it yet yeah, now you can see it's a hackable mu movement and yeah everything nice with it you can set the time like that but now comes the funny part um, let's examine the case back very basic case back which is completely fine absolutely in order no problem with that but there you see um, the words truth beauty and love I mean what the heck do those words on this case back of this nice expedition watch I don't get it and if you study the website of the of the company and the press material then you find a lot of marketing um, I will, uh, marketing yeah b b b b bullshit very, very sorry sometimes it sounds like they want to sell me a Hollister t-shirt or something like that or fashion shit and no no absolutely not why are those marketing words on this nice watch the truth the beauty the love you don't need to yeah, read it yourself please but it's 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 a little bit bs i mean why not saying just saying here here you have a pretty good alternative to the overpriced rolex explorer you have a rock solid watch good looking with really nice ingredients this is really something competitive and you could be happy and we don't bother you with um, yeah with 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 marketing we bother you with product quality this could be a really nice claim or really realistic claim for this watch because it's a really good piece I mean if you need king size on the die yeah arguable if um, and if you find that it's a little bit stolen from Omega and Rolex yeah of course but I mean the ingredients are good and it's good looking it's nice on the wrist I will show you this I will show you this wait a second there we are I mean look at that this just looks good I mean look at the height nice one clasp 
everything fine. And now you may ask, why is he so angry about three words on the back? My God, it's, there are only three words. Because, and I can explain you this now, because those words, this marketing, affects the price of the watch. They state this clear and, and open, that this watch is part of a brand world. And the retail price for this watch is 1,800 euros. And so those are two, roughly 2,000 US dollars. And I wrote to life and I was very polite. I didn't say that this is absolutely um, incredible. I said to him, um, if he's willing, maybe in the future to reconsider or recalculate that price. And he said that this watch made in Germany with those ingredients, that in fact it's without competition. And I don't think that this is accurate, to be frank. This is not accurate. And then he, yeah, he tries to give the watch extra value with truth, beauty and love. We regard a mechanical watch as a talisman which builds a bridge between the past and the future, telling with a whispering voice right here, right now. Do it even with the fear you feel, a love letter to the present with all its options and wonders. Guys, Life has managed to produce a very good prototype. This is a really cool watch. It feels good. I mean, this is the problem with the camera. You can't see everything, but you, they cannot feel it. And on the wrist, this feels really, really, really good. I've worn this watch um, two entire days and I enjoyed it. And so, Life, if you're seeing this, this watch is great. You've done a good job here. Really good job. Thumbs up. Absolutely thumbs up. But please recalculate that damn price here. The Kickstarter campaign will be will offer some discounts, okay? And so then you might be to pick up that watch around 1,000 or 1,200 euros, we will see. But if Life managed to sell watches at this price point, 1,800 euros, then Life, please give me a shout out. Um, I will mention you on the channel with a big congratulation to manage that. Okay, welcome back. And now I have a question or um, a wish. Please, could you please um, post other alternatives for a Rolex Explorer in the comments, please. Because um, I was close to buy the Zeno Watch Basel, I was close to buy the Smith Everest, I was close to buy both, but I'm really in the mood to search a little bit longer and to find other models. And so if you have something in mind, which fits in this category, then please don't hesitate, put it in the comments. Okay, that's all I want to say about this topic here. Um, if you want to have from time to time a sneak preview to, uh, for further videos, then please follow me on Instagram. It's caseback underscore Tim. And now let me thank you very much for your attention and maybe until next time.